So, infinite plane charge. And it's implicitly uniform density. Again, not being as specific as I was when we first did it. Okay? Just reminding you, in other words, because that's what we're doing, we're reviewing. I'm trying to remind you of the ideas, the premises, and the general way we go from premises to conclusion. Okay? So you're best knowing all the premises and knowing how to move premises to conclusion. There's a limit to how much of that is practical in any given course, but push those limits if you can. Okay, there's an infinite plane charge, right? So what we do is, here's an infinite plane charge, and we're just going to take any region. We often do this as a rectangle, but I'm going to, a kind of class that I am, I'm going to, <laughs> make this a cylinder, okay? Now if I be a little more careful about my shading, then you know this half of that boundary becomes a dotted line because you can't see it. Everything in here is a dotted line because it's behind the plane. All this is visible. So it's like we have a shape that looks something like this, not all that well drawn. Okay? So that could be um, a cylinder, not a circular cylinder, okay? You have some closed curve, and the cross-section is always that closed curve, right? So uniform uniform cross-sections of area A. And of course, I could have made this a polygon, regular polygon, irregular polygon. Then it would be a prism instead of a cylinder. But that's what it is. Um, whatever it is, <laughs> as long as the cross-section is always the same and uniform, and of course, everything is perpendicular It's perpendicular <coughs> to the plane, okay? Then the enclosed charge is sigma A. Flux through either end is E times A. By symmetry, you have equal flux through here and here. So it's 2E times A. Now the symmetry argument depends on this being an infinite plane. So by symmetry, E is perpendicular to the plane at any point. And you need this because if E is perpendicular to the plane and the cross sections are parallel to the plane, right? Then E is perpendicular to the cross sections, in particular, E is perpendicular to the ends, and you just get to multiply E times A at each end, right? So, 
2e times a is 4 pi k times sigma a. Okay? And you solve for e, you get e equals 2 pi k. Okay? And I think when you asked the question, you said e was... You still got uh, 2 pi k sigma, of course. E was 2 times something. Well, it is. It's 2 times pi k sigma. Yeah, that's why I'd say 2 e times a. That's what I'd ask. Okay. Okay. So you were yeah. quoting this. Yeah, that explains But the it. final result, of course, you solve for e. Right. Okay, very good. Okay. Very good. But, you know, as I said, when you ask the question, there's your premise, right. there's your symmetry argument, there's Gauss's law, there's a conclusion. Okay?